Welcome back to a brand new Clash Royale video, guys. My name is Chief Pat, and today we're gonna be hopping into a couple of battles I saved up on my main account where I actually had some pretty impressive comebacks, and uh, things got a little bit crazy inside of these replays. Now, first, I am playing the Pekka Double Prince deck. Later inside of this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys a new deck that's been absolutely insane. Uh, but taking a look at the very beginning, you can see I used my arrows on the uh, Princess, which turned out to be pretty stupid because he hit me with the Minion Horde immediately afterwards. We tried to freeze his push, after that but with the skeletons and the goblins going down the lane no arrows to do anything about it believe it or not the skeletons actually do an insane amount of damage per second if they can reach the tower and uh yeah we played a pretty dumb princess as well the princess is gonna die after the tower goes down and uh so far we are down a single tower we are down two elixir as well and uh this is pretty much the worst start to the game imaginable i mean if we got three stout crowned off the first start that'd be pretty embarrassing but this is the second worst thing i guess that can happen uh so so yeah, things don't look good, and I'm, I have to get some sort of elixir advantage rolling if I want this deck to work, or else he's just going to keep countering me on defense. And he decides to go for an aggressive push with the Hog Rider. Now, rather than just sitting back, he's going on the offensive. He's going to get a good amount of damage on my tower, about a thousand with that push. And uh, now we're going to go for a counter push and see what he can do. Now, our Dark Prince is going to die, and our Dark Prince was sort of our AoE clearing. It was to clear, like, the skeletons, the goblins, and stuff like that. That's the whole point of it inside of the deck. So he's just going to start spamming some of these smaller troops i actually threw the arrows again maybe not my best play because it only took one more hit from each the pekka and the prince to take care of uh, those skeletons and goblins but still things are looking okay we can play our princess to clear out this minion horde he's gonna end up zapping it which is actually gonna end up taking out the princess we're not gonna take too much more damage and uh, at this point since he doesn't have a zap left he doesn't have his princess because it's left on the ground he has nothing left to counter our minion horde just like the push he did to us he got rid of all of our cards that could counter his horde and the uh, same thing right here and we're actually gonna have two damage uh, pretty much, yeah, just enough damage to get over and kill that tower. I think I had like two extra damage than what I needed, which ended up being pretty clutch. And now he's starting to get a little bit desperate. You can see he throws the minion horde down right on top of the princess. I can arrow that for like a five elixir positive trade. I've got my prince taking care of the goblins right here. And uh, things are definitely looking a lot better. What looked like a completely lost game, now we at least have a chance. Of course, our tower is still at 1,496 HP. He goes in with the hog rider in the very center. I wasn't really sure what he was doing with that, but he plays his first lightning spell of the game and uh, that ended up being pretty nuts his zap only hits three of the minions we've got our prince running down the lane but guess what our tower is at 570 hp but his king tower is under assault from our prince we throw the arrows right when the goblins go down you can call it skill you can call it luck you can call it whatever but that's going to give us the three crown and a pretty crazy turnaround victory it's never good to just quit the game after you lose the first tower i know it's pretty tempting sometimes sometimes i just want to sw swipe up and blame it on lag uh, if you guys have seen my streams but definitely make sure to keep playing because things like this can definitely happen and uh, let's go and hop into another replay against kit and this will be the second and final one we use playing the pekka double prince deck now really with pekka double prince there's two ways you can play it one you can try to stockpile elixir and go for a big push with your pekka uh, both your princes and your princess or you can go for the um you can go for the arrows bait where you try to take out their, uh, you try to get them to use their arrows on your princess or your minion horde, and then uh, you pretty much go in and dominate them on the opposite lane. Okay, so looks like we're going to be playing right here. I missed the free spell onto the Dark Prince. Really not too big of a deal. It doesn't do that much damage, but take a look at the cards I have. I don't have any cards that can counteract this push. I've got my minion horde coming up. That's probably my best bet to kill that prince, but the prince is going so crazy onto that tower uh, that things were actually a little bit rough right there. He is going to have to zap my minion horde before it gets to the princess. Pekka is running towards the tower as well. I was hoping at least one minion would, or at least, yeah, the one minion would take out that princess, and we don't even get a hit on the tower uh, because of the fact that he drops goblins at the last second. So while we do have an elixir advantage right here, we definitely are in a lot of trouble. Our tower's at 134 HP. I'm guessing he has arrows as well because he's running the mirror matchup deck. And uh, as the Dark Prince rumbles down the lane, we have to make a choice which card we want to drop. We could drop a Pekka. Instead, we end up dropping a Prince. He's probably just gonna do the same thing into his lane. But again, we do need to drop our Elixir Collector sometime soon uh, because we gotta start snowballing our lane and try to get some sort of Elixir advantage. Now, we do get two hits off on the tower and that ends up being pretty big. Instead of dropping his Prince up front, he actually decides to go for that and we're just going to start slowly chipping away. We've got our arrows right here, and by the time, so when he played his Ice Wizard, I knew he didn't have Minion Horde. 
uh, because people run either the Ice Wizard or the Minion who are inside their deck. I tried to stick it out and make sure that Prince uh, wouldn't charge up, but it looks like the last arrow didn't get there in time, and uh, we ended up losing our left hand tower. So at this point, choosing between the two lanes we want to attack, um, normally I, I like to attack the lane that still has my crown tower inside of it, but seeing as we did 1400 damage on the left hand lane, uh, it makes sense to go this way. And the reason that I like attacking in the lane that my tower's in, because now that this first tower's down, he can drop troops like directly on top of mine. He's gonna be able to assassinate this princess if he wants to. He has a lot of different options going down um, and countering me in the left hand lane. But if you take a look at the right, he commits a lot of elixir there. And we actually ended up hitting our arrows on a little bit of those goblins. So he gets a little bit greedy. I decided to just go for a massive push down the right hand lane. And as seeing as he has that P.E.K.K.A. and Ice Wizard right there, I'm just going to freeze those. I'm going to use my Minion Horde to take them out. And now we have a huge push going down the left, and we actually locked onto the King Tower. So the P.E.K.K.A. is going crazy. The P.E.K.K.A. actually has the aggro of the right-hand tower, so the Minion Horde's going crazy on the right-hand side. And uh, things went from 0 to 100 real quick. We've got the Princess assassinating that right-hand tower. He drops the Goblins, trying to snipe down our Princess in time. And uh, as we go into what looks like overtime, he's only got a little bit of HP left on his tower. Our Princess does end up dying right there. Uh, but still, two arrows will be enough to take him out. And uh, this one is pretty much over. We drop our Minion Horde in the very center, seeing if we can take him out. We're going to freeze him as well. And as our Minions end up taking out that King Tower, that's going to be a good game and another three crown comeback so very nice right there again the lane choice right there i was choosing to attack the other lane that most of his troops were on because i know he was going to go for my second tower on that side and uh, seeing as he played it a little bit poorly we were able to capitalize with that free spell on the pekka as well as the ice wizard but let's go and hop into this new deck that i've been playing uh, that's been all over the leaderboard i think molt made a video on this this deck's been really popular it's pretty good against pekka double prince and uh, what you run is baby dragon barbarians prince arrows elixir collector um, a couple of other things as well that help you defend against pushes so let's go and go in this is actually not an ideal hand normally i like to have the uh, elixir pump as my first card and believe it or not I've actually been mirroring the elixir pump, which is so stupid in a vacuum because you only get a one elixir profit and you have to spend so much to get it down on the field. And uh, yeah, because of that, I went a little bit too aggressive. He had the perfect counter with the P.E.K.K.A. Our arrows, we did get a little bit of damage on that P.E.K.K.A. right there, but still, we are in a lot of trouble as that P.E.K.K.A. starts rumbling down our lane. And uh, it went a little bit better than I thought. I sort of felt like I was going to lose a tower right there, but splitting up our Barbarians um, to both kill the Dark Prince as well as kill the P.E.K.K.A. worked out pretty well. He's going to play a Prince and place down another Elixir Collector, which is super annoying to deal with. And uh, we're just going to use our Spear Goblins to try to take him out. So Spear Goblins will stop the Prince. We're actually gonna have to end up playing our own Prince because the Spear Goblins don't do enough damage. And uh, another Elixir Collector is going in the very back. And this is just turning into a pump war. I've been playing a lot of battles with this deck where it just comes down to who can place the most pumps. And uh, seeing as he got that two pump advantage in the very beginning, we're gonna have to find a way to deal with this. Now, I don't mind taking too much damage from the Dark Prince. Obviously, it's not ideal, but I, I can't really do anything to counter him. If I had dropped my Spear Goblins, they would have just gotten destroyed. So just trying to take out this P.E.K.K.A. as soon as possible. Our tower's down to 513 HP, and uh, this is where things can get a little bit hairy. I decide to let the P.E.K.K.A. walk all the way down there, and as soon as this Prince comes charging down the lane, we'll play our Barbarians instead. And uh, at this point, we should have a reasonable push down the right-hand lane. He he plays another elixir collector i feel like that was pretty greedy at this point i know he obviously only has five elixir to defend he's gonna end up placing his free spell and i have the free spell in my hand so i'm waiting to see what he plays next he plays the dark prince we play the uh, free spell right on top of that and uh, now we're gonna start going crazy for the tower he doesn't play his minion horde just yet i think he was a little bit scared of my arrows minion horde finally goes down right here arrows are gonna drop right onto the minion horde and my dragon actually turned around and uh, somehow some way we went from 513 damage on our tower all the way to pushing his side of the base and uh, with a free spell dropped right on top of the king tower as well as the pekka the prince is going to clean up the game and uh, that's going to give me another surprising three crown win so pretty much what happened with this i feel like he got a little bit of, uh, greedy with those elixir collectors and right when he placed that one in the top left i knew it was my chance to try to win the game of course i didn't know who's going to end up in a three crown i thought i was just going to steal that first tower and then play defense uh, but it ended up working pretty well and uh, it's an example of why this deck is so versatile 
I feel like with this deck and the mirror card especially, you can mirror so many different combinations. I don't think I actually used it inside of this battle, but a lot of the time I'll be using like three baby dragons or something crazy like that once I get to a double elixir and I have all those elixir pumps going. Uh, but let's go ahead and hop into one more battle using this deck. And this one turned out to be pretty epic. I was actually climbing towards the end of last season and I was trying to make my way there as soon as I could. Of course, it looks like we're gonna be playing against Jerry. No clan for some reason, but as my starting hand goes, I actually have the elixir pump, which is normally what I want. So elixir pump goes down, but he has a balloon deck. This is gonna be so tough to deal with. This is one of the decks that I sort of struggle against until I get to double elixir. Notice how I'm waiting to play my free spell. I've tried to get it to as close to the elixir collector as possible. And uh, as soon as he plays his freeze, I'm gonna drop my spear goblins. He will get a hit off against that elixir pump, uh, but we'll be able to take that balloon out. And yeah, things look okay so far. We have a two elixir lead. Unfortunately, our elixir pump did get knocked out. And uh, at this point, gonna see what we wanna play from our the back. I think the baby dragon is probably the strongest choice. Let's see what he plays. And uh, he does have the inferno tower inside of his deck. So that's gonna be really tough for the baby dragon to deal with. However, we do have the barbarians. He does have a Valkyrie to counter it though. And if you take a look at his deck, his deck is all about just trying to get a little bit of damage with the balloon. And as soon as he gets one balloon hit on the tower, he's just gonna try to use rockets against me, uh, which is of course really, really frustrating to deal with. Uh, I'm sure you guys have run into plenty of rocket decks, plenty of mortar decks. And as he drops another balloon down the lane, this one actually doesn't get distracted by our elixir pump. So the elixir pump placement was on the left-hand side. He drops the balloon on the right. He's gonna drop a free spell. Isn't gonna hit our spear goblins, but take a look. Our spear goblins get him so close to dying. I ended up dropping another couple of spear goblins. It only needed one or two spears to kill that balloon. But now that he has that tower down to 1800 HP, it only takes, I think like four rockets to take it out. And uh, a lot of people aren't scared of playing that many rockets. We'll have to see what he does, but we're gonna play a baby dragon in the very back. Once again, we're just trying to get some sort of push going. And more importantly, we're trying to ramp up our elixir collectors. I placed it behind the bottom left tower because I didn't want him to uh, rocket my bottom right tower because a common play with the rocket is to rocket both the collector as well as the tower. But now that we've already made a little bit of an advantage on that bottom left hand side by pumping that first elixir, really not worth him to do it. And take a look, he's gonna play the rocket on both barbarians as well as the tower. And in fact, he only needs th two more rockets to take out that tower, I lied. I thought it was three rockets, it's only two. So we're gonna end up mirroring our prince and going on a little bit of a crazy push. Now he plays a tombstone, a really good countering card he's gonna end up freezing our princes and uh, as you can see this guy is just playing a completely defensive deck with only the balloon and the um the balloon and the rocket to try to hit my towers and as the prince starts wailing away at that valkyrie we're gonna mirror our baby dragons and i know that he's probably gonna play his minion hoard so i threw some preemptive arrows i missed he gave me the laugh uh, but notice those arrows I just placed. Those are gonna come into effect later this battle as far as predictions goes. Just keep an eye on the arrows. Anyways, Elixir Collector is gonna go down in the very center. We're just trying to pump up as much as we can. Again, he's just going full-fledged defense at this point. He doesn't even drop his balloon because he knows two rockets are gonna actually try to take out my tower. Uh, but seeing as he was getting full on Elixir, looks like he will drop the uh, the balloon right there. And at this point, it looks like we're gonna drop our baby dragon. We've got two baby dragons right now that are going crazy. We've got the spear goblins trying to help out against that inferno tower. The inferno actually locks onto the barbarians, which is really good. We're gonna go ahead and throw our arrows onto the minion horde. Those ones actually worked out pretty well. We're gonna play another baby dragon down the left-hand lane to hopefully help out. And uh, this is where he actually decides to drop a rocket and that rocket's gonna go towards my tower. Now at this point, I have three baby dragons onto his tower. He's gonna end up freezing me. I'm gonna end up trying to freeze him back in just a moment and take a look at this. Remember those arrows I played earlier in prediction? Watch as these arrows fly out way before the minion horde comes out, destroys the minions in a single swoop. The laugh emote's gonna be spam just like he was laugh emoting me. And that was one of the sweetest revenge battles I've ever had uh, after he BM'd me after those first arrows. They worked out the second time. They were placed just perfectly to take out that tower. One more rocket would have killed us. So that was the game winning push right there. Uh, anything else we would have lost. So yeah, that was a really fun battle. Definitely one of the most satisfying I've had in my account and uh, overall that's gonna wrap it up for the final comeback that I wanted to post so some really fun battles here if you guys have had some crazy comebacks let me know in the comments section below uh, but yeah that's gonna do it until next time I will see you guys later peace out